Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll be commencing the uh, town hall shortly. Um, in the meantime, if you'd like to uh, click on the QR code here to select the language that you'd like to have today's sessions translated into, um, the, uh, the details are there on the screen for you. So it's terrific to see we've got people joining us from North America and South America. I can see we've got uh, someone from Montevideo, Montevideo in Uruguay, Ohio, Texas, uh, The Hague. <laughs> I think we've got quite a few people from the Netherlands joining us this evening as well. And so Hong Kong, Helen Chan, welcome uh, as well. Jamila from Argentina. So we'll just give everyone a few more minutes to join us. Oh, and goodness, 11 p.m. Thank you, Christina. That's certainly late. So thank you for joining us. <clears throat> So if you would like to use the translation, the uh, the QR codes on the screen, and um, that's the the QR code that you can use to link into Wordly, and then you can choose the language that you'd like to have the translation into. Okay, so I think we might start. I can see that we've got people joining us and um, as we progress, people will be able to join us as well. Um, my name is Vicky McDonald and it is my great privilege to be the IFLA president for 2023 to 2025. And I'd like to welcome you today to our town hall to talk to you about the new IFLA strategy for 2024 to 2029. And this is part of a series of town halls that we're undertaking over the, uh, the two-week period uh, to seek your views on the development of the new um, strategy. As I said at the beginning, if you're just joining us now, we do offer translation. Uh, this is the QR code that you can click on. Just choose the language that you'd like to have today's event translated into, and that should happen automatically for you. So joining me today is the IFLA Secretary General. So I'd like to uh, welcome Sharon, uh, joining us from the Netherlands. How are you today, Sharon? I'm very well. It's the end of the day for me. So um, I will, after this, make my night tea and go to bed. But uh, I think just to say that here we are towards the end of May, which means that I started IFLA at IFLA as Secretary General almost exactly one year ago on the 1st of June. I can't quite believe I've been here for one year and it's been great. So um, I'm celebrating that. Fantastic. Congratulations. 12 months have certainly flown and it's been terrific to have you uh, with the IFLA team as well. Also joining us today is Stephen Weiber, the Director of External Affairs, and Stephen will pop in once we get to the section where we're seeking your feedback as well. Um, I can see there's a few questions around the translation. So um, there is, the link is in the chat session if you're looking for the link. So today, how we're going to work the session is, the session is really about the IFLA strategy, um, and it's about setting you up to enable you to be able to give feedback. So hopefully you've had a chance to have a quick look at the strategy and familiarise yourself with it. Um, really, it's um, we're going to take you through the structure. <clears throat> 
excuse me, and the context and a, a little bit of how we've got to where we are, as well as the next steps as well. Uh, there will be the opportunity to provide feedback through a mentee process during the session, but we also encourage you to use the question and answer function to ask questions, and Sharon and I will look at those and respond to them during the session as well. I think the key thing to remember is if something doesn't make sense to you, uh, it probably doesn't make sense to somebody else. So do put the question in the, the Q&A function and we'll um, get to that as well. But as I said, the, the overall purpose of the session is to give you an overview of the strategy, what our intent is, and uh, set you up to be able to provide feedback through our survey um, that we have already commenced as well. So let's look at how we've got to where we are. You may recall at the uh, the Congress back in Rotterdam in August, in my first speech as IFLA president, I talked about the one of the important things for the incoming governing board was to progress the development of a new strategy. The current strategy that we have was developed through the global vision process over a number of years and um, has been our strategy for the period of uh, 2019 to 2024. So it's an opportunity now to reflect on the work that we've done across the last five years and develop our next strategy for the next five years. So back in October, over a period of months, we undertook a number of pulse surveys where we sought your feedback on your experience of using the current strategy, but also what you were looking for in a new strategy. And it was fantastic to have such a strong response through those pulse surveys. And the thing to remember is all the feedback that we've received from you over the last five, six months is also available on our website. So you can look at that as well. In December, when the governing board met in The Hague, we reviewed the results of those pulse surveys and, and did some initial high-level thinking around the strategy and what we hope to achieve through the strategy. And one of the first things that we agreed was what we call the change pathways. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we progress through the, um, through the session today. In January to March, we undertook another survey on those change pathways, seeking your feedback on what your thoughts were, and we'll share some of that today. We analysed it, and then we also commenced um, the preparation of the new strategy. And of course, when I say we, of course, referring to the fantastic team at the at IFLA headquarters in The Hague, who do most of the work in, in helping us to process the responses that we've got, consider the res responses that we receive from you and prepare the strategy. So in April, just last month, the governing board met again in The Hague and we considered and approved the zero draft of the strategy. So this initial draft that we are providing for feedback, it's available on the website and over the next um, month, you'll be see, see that we are seeking your feedback on that draft strategy. So as I've mentioned, uh, there is a series of town halls. This is the third one that we've done this week. And um, there will also be a further one next Thursday in French. So Sharon will lead that together with Leslie Weir, the, the president-elect as well. So um, you may wish to join that as well if you are a, a French speaker. Unfortunately, I don't speak French, so I, I won't be joining that one as well. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, we're in... Um, May, uh, looking towards completing that next round of consultation in June as well. So looking at the session for today, um, as I said, the, the purpose of the session is to over, give you an overview of the structure of the new draft strategy. You'll see that it's formatted in a different way to the current strategy. Uh, we do have a new vision that we'd like to share with you and get your feedback. And we're also going to share with you this, some of the elements of the strategy itself. So impact areas and an enabler. And in today's session, we'll be seeking your feedback on those specific elements as well. Then wrapping up, I'll talk about the next steps and the survey and how you can participate in that survey. But of course, this session is really about providing you more information to enable you to complete that survey. So if we go to the next slide, so our goals for today's session. Um, overall, what we're seeking is a strategy that supports IFLA in realising its potential as a global organisation for libraries. 
Of course, with a strategy like the strategy that you have in your organisations, everybody uses a strategy differently. Uh, certainly the, the staff at IFLA headquarters will use the strategy to plan the work that they do across the next couple of years, um, and it provides the priorities and the, um, the important areas to focus on. The IFLA sections, standing committees, different advisory groups will also use the strategy to inform the work that they will progress in developing their action plans. But we also hope that library associations across the world will look at this strategy and consider the elements that are relevant to them and consider it when they're developing their strategy. And similarly, um, for libraries as well, as you develop your own strategy, you may like to look at this strategy to inform your work. I know the, um, the organisation where I work, the State Library of Queensland, when we're developing our strategy, we always do an environmental scan, look at other people's strategies and their action plans, and consider that as we're developing our own strategy to ensure that we, we've been comprehensive and, and considered everything that we need to do. As I said, today we're, it's about helping you to understand what we are proposing in the new strategy and to enable you to participate and give feedback in the, uh, the current survey that we are conducting. But we'll also get some first impressions from you as well through the Menti, uh, Menti survey that we'll do in a few moments as well. The survey is already open and we've got had some great feedback so far, particularly through these town hall sessions. So looking forward to receiving your feedback. When we met in April um, at The Hague, the governing board was really excited about this strategy and the potential that it has to inform the work for us going forward over the next few years. So let's have a look at what the some of the feedback that we received in our initial poll surveys. So one of the things we thought was really important to understand is how our members and volunteers use our current strategy, and that can help us inform as we develop our next strategy. And this slide, uh, how to read it, is the blue bars are where people have agreed and red bars indicate where they disagree. And I guess what you can see immediately on the left is that there's very, very strong awareness of the IFLA strategy. So uh, nearly 80%, which is fantastic to see. Um, but then when you look across, you can see this variation between um, different responses as to how people are using it. You can see regular reference. So people regularly referring to the, to the strategy is below 40% but others are using the strategy to find out about the work of IFLA. So I think these give us some, um, some indications of the sorts of things that we need to consider as we develop the next strategy. The regular reference, how can we increase that and make it relevant to people so that they actually are looking at the strategy to inform the work that they are doing? These are very high-level um, results as well. And I think sometimes it's useful to drill down into the responses that are available on the website. And if you do that, you'll see that there's, there is significant variation in the regions across the globe in how people are using our current strategy. And we've seen particularly uh, in Africa and in South America, there's much stronger uh, use of the strategy through regular reference and inspiration for the work that they're doing. So um, if you'd like to understand a little bit more about how people are using the current strategy, that information is available on our website. Through the Pulse surveys, we also asked people what they wanted the next strategy to do. So based on having used our current strategy across the last four years, what did people actually want from a strategy? And you can see here the responses that we have. And on the left-hand side, really strong response around vision and actions. Actually, um, the vision inspiring and giving direction to the actions. And I guess that also leads to measuring impact as well. And next to it is the adaptable and adoptable. So people actually want to be able to use the strategy in different ways and make it relevant to their particular circumstances. So whether it's their section, their library association or their library. And those first four bars, I think, give us a really strong indication of what we need to consider as we develop our next strategy. 
being relevant for all. And that's really important. It's important that the strategy is relevant to many people, not just a couple of people um, at IFLA headquarters in The Hague. It really needs to have relevance to our sections, our standing committees, our advisory groups, everybody um, that is uh, relevant to this particular strategy. So we have a look at the next slide. It actually gives us a little bit more detail again so this is where this is specifically the response to uh, the pulse surveys around what we call the change pathways. And you can see there again, it's the same similar information that was on the previous slide, uh, that nearly 50% response to making stronger connections between the vision and the action. So that's a vision to actions um, objective, being adaptable and adoptable, and uh, at nearly 40% bringing out our library's contribution to human development and resilience, uh, 40%, so that development contribution, and importantly, being relevant to all people and regions, so relevant for all at 35%. And you can see the rest of the responses as we go down that screen as well. Just number six is there uh, around including, including performance indicators and other means of measuring progress. So it is a 22%, but it is something that the governing board um, and the IFLA staff feel is really important that we consider. It's important that we're able to report back on our progress against the uh, strategy and measure impact as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, in the session today as well. So if we go then to the next slide. And I think at this stage, Sharon, I might hand over to you to take us through the structure of the new strategy. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Vicky. Um, so in a sense, where has all of this taken us? And I do want to emphasize Vicky highlighted those top scoring change pathways. That doesn't mean we've ignored the ones um, at, at the lower end. We've included everything, but just more prominently really focused on your priorities. So let's go through the um, structure, then the overall structure. And I think it's important perhaps to explain the principles and the thinking behind the development of the new strategy, which was really based on responses to the fifth POF survey that so many people responded to. What we didn't do was ignore and forget the importance and scale of the inputs that we had in the development of the last strategy. I think we had something like 32,000 contributions, which is absolutely incredible. So it, it, it is important that we make sure that we're reflecting your views and that you as our, our members and volunteers really do feel engaged in the process when we can't all physically meet, but we looked at ways of, of getting your engagement and contribution. I hope that you I hope that you will see your views reflected in the strategy. Our starting point was really to build on that legacy, if you like, but to focus much more on impact. So thinking about the difference that we can all make. And, you know, as you highlighted quite rightly, you care a lot about how well we explain how our work contributes to making that difference and to the wider goals. In other words, how our actions feed into our visions. And that was your number one um, priority. So in designing a new strategy, what we're trying to do as well is have a much clearer, simpler, and, and a more visual format. Um, those of you with any um, knowledge and uh, familiar with theory of change will, I think, recognize the, the structure and the format. But we wanted to have, if you like, a summary strategy on a page, even though there are more detailed plans underneath. And also we'll, we'll be looking at um, even more detailed working plans, if you like, underneath that and action plans, which may respond to changes in the external environment, just as when we did the strategy in 2019, we, we didn't know that there would be a pandemic that would kind of turn our worlds upside down. So we want to have something which gives a framework, but which can be flexible and responsive as well. And as Vicky said, you know, really relevant for everybody. Um, so this focus is very much on action, uh, so less on actions, but much more on the difference that we can make, that long-term impact. And I, I think we've also, as we say, try to be not too, too specific, 
but we hope that it's going to be really relevant, as I say, to everybody. And um, I think we also want to have a clearer explanation of where IFLA's work really adds value. So how can we help that global library field deliver on these objectives? So let's go to actually look at the, the, the one pager itself. Um, so, sorry, let, let's just, sorry, one principle talking a little bit about why we're working together. Sorry, Stephen, I was missing out a slide there. Um, I'm getting too excited about the actual strategy, but I think the, the other important principle is why we work together. And to state the sort of blindingly obvious, IFLA is international. And we anticipate that anybody who is involved or interested or engaged in IFLA has an interest in international collaboration. So that's a, a fundamental um, principle. Um, but as I say, we're really looking at how IFLA can add value to your international experience, learning and collaboration. And we've also really um, tried to give an explanation of how to actually read the strategy. And in particular, looking at some of those kind of cross cutting issues. So it's not that you find one box and you think, oh, yes, that's where I belong and that's where I'll stay. They're very much cross cutting issues and that we hope will encourage ever greater collaboration. So now let us actually look at the, um, the structure of the, uh, of the actual strategy, as I say, if you have worked with um, theories of change, you'll recognize this. So at the top, we've got the, the vision um, and then an explanation of how we can achieve this. And we've broken this down into three key areas of impact across the library field. Um, as you can see, we, we like the power of three and we think that's a nice, easy number and a number of issues to remember. Um, and we've included a very strong focus on metrics and definitions of success. So what does success look like, as well as cross-cutting enablers? So what is it that can help optimize the delivery of, of this work and the success? So in other words, we're moving away from a strategy that simply sets out what we do to one that sets out the difference we want to make. So in other words, from doing to achieving, if you like, from activity to impact. And this is quite a shift from what we had before. Um, next slide. So what about the actual substance? So let's start from the top, our vision and how we see the library field achieving it. Um, so here it is. Vision is sustainable futures for all through knowledge and information. I think the first thing to note about the vision is that it's much shorter than the last one and much easier to remember. I know that when I looked at the vision when I joined IFLA last year and I had to keep reading it and I kept getting the words in the wrong order. So this one I've been able to remember from the day that we, we came up with it. Um, and I hope as well that, that you'll see that what we've tried to do is to start with what we want to achieve. So it's sustainable futures for all through knowledge and information and putting libraries very much in that broader ecosystem and looking at how we can all contribute to the delivery of sustainable futures for all. One thing I want to say about sustainable futures for all is that you'll also recognize parallels in this strategy with the sustainable development goals. And in many countries, we're all familiar with it. We, we use it as a framework. Sometimes people think, oh, sustainable development, that is for the developing world. It isn't. And the thing about the sustainable development goals and sustainable futures is that it impacts all of us, whether in, we're in Europe and North America, or in sub-Saharan Africa or, or parts of Asia, it is relevant for everybody. So that was the thinking behind this. Um, and how to achieve it? Well, it's very much, you know, libraries, I'll read it, it's worth reading, I hope. Libraries, their workforce and their associations globally have the capability, contacts, confidence and resilience to realize their potential to drive sustainable development in a fast evolving world. 
That's the world that we want to see. That's what we want to be working towards. And we think that this really captures the powerful potential contribution and role of libraries, as I say, in that wider ecosystem for building a better world for everyone. Okay, next slide. So here are the three areas through which we see libraries making this happen. And the first one is innovative, effective, ethical, professional practice. It's really how library and information professionals are constantly evolving, you know, improving, innovating in response to the needs of the communities that they serve. That professional side is, is, is hugely important. And the second one is impactful engagement with stakeholders and communities. As many of you know, IFLA has a brilliant advocacy team led by Stephen, and we have actually got a seat at the global tables. We are making a difference. Libraries' voices are heard because of the work of Stephen and his team and the way that he draws on the experts in our amongst our network of volunteers and members. But we are listened to. We are a partner with UNESCO. Um, we are an observer at the UN. We are at all the big meetings internationally. We are at WIPO um, quite frequently. So we are that global voice of libraries. We are making the case everywhere. And we've had some real measurable and huge success, successes there. The third one is how can we best deliver meaningful impact and evidence success and success. It's really structures and capacity for delivering development goals. So it's about making sure that we are globally relevant, that we can work across the globe, really to ensure that that capacity building is happening and that we can tell the story. And it's not just IFLA that tells the story, but that it's everybody that can tell the story to their governments, to their funders, to partners. And I think that this is a really important, uh, an important one. So if you like, it's around the professional side, the sort of advocacy side, and really the, the kind of global relevance and, and impact side. Um, and these are very much broad areas. And we, we see, I think all associations, institutions and agencies, and of course, individuals, contributing to this and importantly it's not just about IFLA but rather it sets out the basics of a theory of change of library powered improvement and later we will look at how IFLA actually can help make this happen um, and now I think I'm going to hand over to Stephen who is going to ask you some questions and, and get you to um, focus on uh, the vision and get some feedback for us, which uh, we hope and I'm sure will be really useful. So thank you. Stephen, over to you. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of you are already very familiar um, with Menti as a way of sharing your inputs and sharing your ideas during the webinar. So I would encourage you to go to menti.com and to put in the code 68750764. So menti.com 68750764. And at this first stage, share your answers to the following two questions. So um, the vision and the explanations, this overall logic of how libraries make a difference. Um, have we got this? Is this clear? And secondly, is it convincing? So um, great, thank you. And you'll find in the chat the links, great. So a couple of people have already found this. So let's give this a minute or so. And I think once we've got about half of half of our participants responding will then move on but so far it's all very con it's pretty positive equally split between strongly agree and agree okay Almost 10 respondents so far. Let's, let's give another 
20 seconds or so. Okay, so it looks like we're scoring slightly higher on them being clear. We could probably do more about them being convincing, so that's really useful feedback. Okay. So I think you'll still be able to respond to that one, but I think in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the um move on to the next one where you can actually and this will encourage you to write down what, what comments do you have what, uh, about the vision and the explanations that Sharon's presented there of how libraries globally contribute. So I'm assuming that's showing up for everyone. Please do let us know if it's not. Um, and we look forward to your answers. Thank you, Stephen. And just a reminder, the vision is sustainable futures for all through knowledge and information. So I guess we're we're looking for your me immediate reaction to that as our vision statement. And if you want to do it in Spanish, you can. We can we can cope with that. Okay. There's some feedback there around the order of information and knowledge. So I said, so it's, yeah. So a preference to an information being first. Um, some good feedback against being clearer and actionable. Um, <laughs> and uh, again. Um, affirmation on the use of sustainability. I think across the three sessions, we've certainly had a lot of strong feedback around the shortness and clarity of the vision. Uh, people have responded really well um, in all the sessions we've had to date on the, um, on the vision. I think the interesting thing is going to be when we do the final version, making sure that we can um, get it right in all of the languages because at the moment we've done um i think the, the certain amount of machine translation uh so when we come to do the final versions we'll want to make sure that it really works in all of the languages up on the comment that's there uh, clear for us as librarians but i think it would be important that it's clear for all people and i think that's come through in a lot of our discussions around a lot of what we're seeking to achieve uh, for ifla is for libraries but all the also the communities that they serve and and i guess that may be something for us to consider um in in our next review of the of the wording is how we capture that communities that are served by libraries um as well yeah. And I think that that point about sustainability and sustainable development, which I sort of tried to, to reflect a little in the presentation, but I think that's an area where we're going to look um, at how we can better explain sustainability, uh, sustainable development. For some and I think the comment about being broad enough yet in inclusive, I think, too, is important because the strategy is for a period of five years. So it really needs to be give us scope for an extended period of time. So, okay. yeah, some good feedback there, Stephen. Great. OK, so I think let, let's move on. There's yeah, we're 35 past. So. Okay. so Sharon's going to take us, I think, through the impact areas. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. So um, impact areas. And, and thank you very much for that feedback. I think it's been really useful. So as we said, that these are really broad areas. And um, this is where we see really action by IFLA, our volunteers and HQ really collectively is making a difference. Um, so let's have a look then um, at this. No, if we can go back, Steve, <laughs> just back um, to the vision one. Yeah. So what we've um, got here is trying to see the, 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 if you like, the strategy on a page. And this is the kind of one page uh, high level, which I hope you'll see is going to be a really quick summary of how we can we can um, we can get there and show the whole strategy just very simply and clearly and see how the actions taken by IFLA map onto those three impact areas. So let's go through all of those in turn. Um, 
So the three impact areas, um, let's take them each then. The first one is the vibrant global professional communities feeding into that first impact area. And this is really how our headquarters and volunteers can support the areas. These are our professional councils, the high performing, the diverse volunteer groups. You know, we have over 1100 volunteers, a huge range of professional units, the regional councils, the advisory committees, and actually having that real strength there is hugely valuable. We know also that the professional standards are the most visited part of our website. And I think that this is this is really the core of what IFLA does. IFLA exists for its members and that professional collaboration and international learning and exchange is really important. So it's about what IFLA can do to, to really optimize their, their functionality, give them the best conditions to collaborate and work and as many opportunities as possible. So that's a really clear area for us. The second impact area, libraries are recognized, represented and valued as partners. And this is talking very much about the advocacy work where we can support and it's getting that international recognition of the role of libraries. And it's also about supporting our members, and we've done this through international workshops, giving um, participants really the tools, the knowledge, the expertise, the connections of how to really make the case for libraries with their stakeholders, be they funders, uh, be they partners, uh, be they different communities. And this is, you know, again, a really important area. And I know that the feedback we've had from the workshop we did, for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, there's been a huge activity after that, making connections with the local UN and UNESCO representatives, using the skills um, that we gave them and the material to go and build new partnerships with key stakeholders. So I think this is a big area where we can really help and support. The third area, libraries are enabled to deliver meaningful change at all levels. And again, this is part of the, um, the work that we've been doing and in investing in our regional structures, our offices, um, the language centers, the regional council and divisions, really ensuring that we are both hearing the priorities and needs of um, our, our members across the globe, and, and some of them are different. We may we share a lot in common, but there are also some different and specific needs and how we can then work to get appropriate and relevant action plans and work plans with the regions. What kind of training and capacity building can we provide? Um, Christine, our, our manager uh, for Impact and Insight, has been delivering some really um, brilliant training on monitoring and evaluation and impact. How can we as well work with associations in the wider field um, to, to help make change? So how do we support, how do we work with you in order for you to deliver what you need, the change that you need, that capacity building to, to enable you to be the, the best of yourselves? So I think those are the, the, the three areas that, um, the, the impact areas that feed into those three success measures that we talked about before. Okay, next slide. And I think this is an important one to mention. This is the enabler. Um, and this is probably the bit that's a little less visible um, to many of our members. And this is really about getting IFLA um, headquarters um, as well-managed, as effective, as efficient, um, as we possibly can. And so this is about future-proofing IFLA. So much of what we're doing in our focus um, in the coming months is going to be around the future sustainability of IFLA, working with you to build those partnerships, to diversify the partnerships, to bring in new funding, making sure that we are also um, being really transparent that we are uh, that we've got great governance, we've got good management, we've got an effective team, um, that the team is happy 
um, that they're high performing, that we have a good and positive culture, that we're responsive to, to your needs, and that we are focusing a lot on impact. And I think one of the areas that we've, we've got a couple of new roles that I think will be instrumental here. One is um, Christina's role, uh, who is our new sort of manager of impact and um, evaluation and insight. And that professional expertise on impact, on measurement, so that we can measure ourselves is essential. We've got a new um, community practice uh, uh, manager as well to look at new ways of connecting our members and volunteers and different groups, new, new professionals, emerging leaders, all sorts of things and working across that. So that we're making some changes internally so that we can better serve and respond to our members' needs globally. Um, and this, we hope, then will lead to that engagement in international librarianship represents a core pillar of the work of the Library of Associations and, and Libraries and the Library and Information Workforce. So it comes back to that international focus, which we all need from you. So I think next on to Stephen again, who's going to ask you some more questions. <laughs> And I hope we get some more feedback. Thanks. And so yes, it, it it's the same questions as 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 before. So um, I encourage you to take a look. And 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 once again, we're asking about whether what we've suggested is clear, and whether it's convincing for you. So um, if you think back to those those four impact areas about vibrant professional communities, about effective advocacy, about capacity building, and of course the overall enabler, um, future proofing IFLA. We'd love to get your answers on how far you agree with are these clear and are they convincing? Yeah, that's good. Four answers already. Oh, yeah, it's going very fast. <laughs> yeah, well, so far, I think we're scoring marginally better on clarity as opposed to being convincing although there's a certainly signal that we can we can do better on both here so that's useful yeah. that's really but, useful okay we're up to yeah. 11 respondents so far so there's quite a few of you who haven't yet indicated your votes but i'll give maybe 20 seconds more and then we'll shift on to the next slide the next question which if you want to start preparing your answers there, it's going to be the same again, a, an open call for comments on what we've been setting out. There's definitely a positive. There's very little. There's very few people are, are disagreeing or there's no one strongly disagreeing. There's there's only one response here that's disagreeing uh, We're about them being convincing, but this is certainly something we need to take into account. Okay, so I'm going to head on to the next um, next. I'll give you a little bit of time just to respond to those. I guess if um if you're not convinced around what we've sh we've shown you, we'd be really keen to have your comments and suggestions on how we could make improvement um as well. So certainly the purpose of this session is to get the feedback uh, from you as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that point about whether it's the language we're using or whether it's the substance, I think is also really um really helpful so i think we we've already seen i think haven't we steve we've looked at things and thought oh yes we could sharpen the language there so um and this feedback's been really helpful yeah i hope this is is working for people as <laughs> The answers to the previous one did not indicate that you think it's perfect. So that's helpful. Oh, this is really helpful. Okay, so we'll um we'll talk a little bit about measures um shortly. So good feedback. Mm -hmm. Great. Some collaboration and partnerships is seen as positive. Yeah, and I think the partnership side is something which is going to feature very, very strongly in our work. And, um, you know, uh, Stephen and I and, and, and colleagues are working very much on that sort of partnership strategy at the moment.
I think too, the thing to remember is we've only shown you the high level strategy on a page. There's also further content that sits behind it, uh, which is available on the website. So that will be useful to look at that as well. So we do have a comment in the chat as well, um, picking that yeah. up. So thank you very much. Um, and I do, I, yeah, and I agree about the translation. I think we've got to work really hard at getting the translations right. At the moment, because it's still draft, um, we've um, we've done quick translations. We haven't done um, you know really good ones that we can test with native speakers. I hope we are in a period of, of um, stability. Um, Yes, thanks. The Spanish is human translated, as um, as Stephen <laughs> has noted. So thank you, Argentina, as well. That's a good comment there around uh, use of verbs, commencing with active verbs. Yeah. Can make its things sound more impactful as well. So thank you for that comment. Maybe let, let, let's give another 20 seconds or so and then we can. And I think just to remind um, everybody as well, there's not just the information that's already underneath it, um, but that we will also be looking at more detailed sort of one year, two year um, plans sort of underneath that. And of course, just to add as well, I know. We've only got limited time on, on 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 this webinar. We're trying to keep these down to an hour because I think we we, we recognise that everyone is is busy. Um, but of course, the whole point of the the survey that we have is so that you can take your time and having stopped, having thought about this, having looked at the the fuller version of the strategy, you can then feedback then. So, I think I will move on to the next slide, if that's okay with you, Sharon, Vicky. Yep. Let's do that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So we're up to next steps, I think. Yes. So next steps are really around seeking you to formally respond to the survey. Um, and our next slide has a QR code on it, which will take you to, to the survey as well. The deadline is the 11th of June. But also, I think before you respond to the survey, it's good to download the full strategy off our website. Um, and as I said, uh, we've shown you today this the high level strategy on a page. But as you if you download the strategy, you'll see that you can drill down into the different um, impact areas and the enabler, where you'll get a lot more information around how they will be implemented and, and what they're seeking to achieve achieve. Um, your contributions will very much continue to shape our strategy as we continue to develop it and finalise it. And we've got the next slide shows the timeline for that process as well. Oh, no, first off, the dashboard. So I think there was a couple of comments around performance measures, and certainly the template that Sharon showed you um, had did have performance measures listed down below at the bottom. So it's really important that as we're implementing a strategy, we're actually focused on what impact we're having and what difference we are making and, and what how do we measure our success. So the team is working parallel with this, um, this next stage of work occurring and looking at potential dashboards. These are some of the outcomes and proposed metrics that are being considered. But of course, we can't finalise that until we've finalised the strategy. So this work is progressing as well. And this is just a sample. But what we wanted to do was to communicate to you that we're really focused on looking at how we're going to measure the impact of the strategy and the difference that it's make. And um, as we progress through finalising the strategy, this particular dashboard uh, will be finalised. And the, HQ, the um, team in The Hague will provide regular reports back to the governing board on that progress as well, which we will, of course, communicate back to you as our members and key stakeholders as well. 
So let's have a look at the timeline going forward. As we've mentioned a few times today, the survey closes on the 11th of June. So a couple of weeks left yet in which to provide your responses. So do take the time to have a look at the strategy. During uh, following the closure of the, the survey on the 11th of June, the team in The Hague will look at a revised version of, of the strategy and preparing it for the discussion at the governing board meeting. You may recall in some of our previous communication, we've talked about the work that was currently underway to progress the next IFLA trend report. And what will happen is we will ensure, ensure that there is a consistency in both the strategy and the trend report as they're both being prepared uh, in parallel. So from July to September, we'll work with IFLA units to explore and work with the new strategy and thinking about how the strategy can be progressed into the action plans for different sections and standing committees. And then the big excitement, uh, the 30th of September to the 3rd of October, we'll be meeting here in Brisbane uh, for the IFLA Information Futures Summit, and that will be the official launch of the strategy. And of course, the trend report will be a great topic of conversation at that summit as well. And the trend report is, is very much shaping the content and discussion of the summit as well. So uh, the launch will occur in Brisbane, and that will then mark the time for the commencement of action plans. So if you're part of a standing committee or advisory committee, your next action plan will commence from that 1st of October period using the new strategy. And of course, the strategy covers the period from 2024 to 2029. So that takes us through the next steps as to how we get from now, seeking your, your contributions through to sharing that with the governing board, getting the approvals and then the official release. But the important thing to remember is that your feedback and commentary is very much used in shaping the strategy going forward. It's very much still a work in progress and we are seeking your feedback uh, and commentary on the work that's been done so far. So do send through your responses to the survey. So I'd like to thank Sharon uh, for joining us today. It's been fantastic to have you step us through the strategy on a page and what sits behind it. Any final comments from you, Sharon? Uh, no, I think it's um, it's been great, obviously, to have everybody there. The comments and the feedback are really, really useful. And um, it, it's just always a joy to see how really engaged and passionate our members and volunteers are about IFLA. So thank you very much. Thanks, Sharon. And thank you to Stephen, who's been doing all the work behind the scenes uh, in, in getting us on the right page um, and also uh, managing the mentee as well. But of course, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Depending where you are, you're off to bed, or if you're like me, um, you're getting ready to go to work and probably have your breakfast. So I can see there's a couple of Australians on the on the uh, on the call today. So thank you very much, and do send us through your commentary. We're certainly ready and waiting to receive it. So thank you, and uh, good day. Thank you. Bye.